OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. I'll briefly introduce myself. My name is Kenya Bracton, and I work with the Disability and Access Resource Center at Sweetwater Adult Education. Um, in our adult schools, we have four different sites. So my role is a mobile, actually our entire DARC team, Disability and Access Resource Center, is a mobile team. So we meet students where they are at. And so one of the um, reasons why I started working in adult education is because I worked in 712 for many decades. And I realized that for students, once they turn 17 or, or were turning 18, they felt really discouraged when they were in a lot of the special education programs. And the labeling and not being sure what they were going to do next. And we have these wonderful resources and opportunities in adult education, but it's almost like a best kept secret, even working in a secondary district. So I had the opportunity to come over here, share my expertise, and just kind of bridge that learning together. So my model pretty much is if you have a learning difference, hi, learning challenge, learning disability, we definitely want you to come and understand all of the resources that we have available to you. Was everyone able to get, um, hi, we're gonna put up the link for um, the workshop. So if you have a mobile device, sir, a QR code, we want you to download the QR code or type in the tiny URL. This is an um, interactive workshop. And while you guys are connecting to that, uh, my name is Margaret Macabasco. I'm the education specialist, a part of our DARC team here. Um, I provide students academic support either in a one-to-one -one setting or in, through direct instruction in my academic development class. I'm gonna give you all another minute. Only because we have 55 minutes. <laughs> Otherwise, if you're actual students, we would give you a little bit more time. Hi. So briefly, I do want to discuss what our DARC services are. So this is an infographic that we have in our district's teacher resources. Um, and all of the teachers also add this link to their Google Classroom for the students. So what we're reviewing with you today are, we are dispelling the myths of technology, but a lot of students enter our classes with probably no technology experience. So just as you took a picture of the QR code and the tiny URL, that already dispels one myth. We can have students walk in the first day and they at least know how to do those two things. And if not, we kind of assist them. It takes 30 seconds, boom. We already have them learning about technology. Um, but this is an overview of our services. So what we will share with you today is how our services are integrated within some of their teaching, um, teaching curriculum. So our services overall, we have disability and access. We do education advising, which includes self-advocacy. It might include how students enroll into a community college or another adult education program. It might simply include, you know, I have a disability, but I don't want my job to know I have a disability, so what can I do to get accommodations without really asking for it, right? So, for example, if someone um, forgets often, instead of saying to their supervisor, I forget so much. We don't <laughs> want the supervisor to think they can't do the job. So what they may say is, is it okay if I write down the instructions and I can kind of carry around, you know, a cue card? Or you know what, is it okay if I take pictures of the order you want me to assemble the product line so that I can make sure I get it accurately. So there's ways around how to get your needs met in the workplace environment. We have flexible scheduling, which means you can have a virtual appointment, you can have an in-person appointment, you have high flex, you have in-person um, learning. And so we are very flexible. We really do have a model, no barriers. That's actually a model in all of our adult schools but we make sure there is no barrier. Nothing can get in your way. Even if you get in your own way, we even help you with that barrier. We have. <laughs> it's true. We have. <laughs> a testing accommodation, et cetera. So this is just an overview of a lot of our services. Um, then our academic development class, you'll learn a lot about that today during the presentation. Then we have employment development services where we help students take a career inventory, prepare for a job, find a job, 
um, find job accommodations, be confident at work, and actually keep the job, right? Um, and we also have Spanish services, which we need to add to our infographic, but we have um, teachers that support us in delivering all of these services also in Spanish. So the next infographic, oh, sorry. This is a QR code when we have our presentations with students or when we're at community fairs. We always ask students to download this into their phone because they'll forget if we're talking to them about all of this. Then this is the dark interest form. So if a student is interested but not quite sure, they immediately complete the form. That, that's my phone, I'll, I'll change it. Everyone was like. <laughs> 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 is that? <laughs> um, I'll put it on the vibrate in a moment. And so this form connects them to our services. The most exciting part about this form is right when you're about to hit submit, our counselor has Calendly actually on the Google form and they can make an appointment in that moment. So that's how we capture many, many students. And she responds within 48 hours. So we don't lose students and they're not waiting too long to be able to receive any support from us. And then it's also in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So you can share this with anyone that you want because sometimes they relocate to San Diego. <laughs> so the reason why you're here today, our learning intentions and impact, is to dispel myths that adults with disabilities cannot access technology equitably or equally as others. And it is our intention to share solutions that work which create access, equity, and inclusion for adults with disabilities that impact their immediate life and forward generations. The reason why we have this statement is um, sometimes when people are thinking about an adult person with a disability, they're thinking about an individual who may have more severe disabilities rather than a disability that you can't see, like depression, sciatica dyslexia, dyscalculia. So um, research actually shows that there's most research on more significant disabilities than there is on the mild disabilities. So we are here to share with you that we know students can access disability and how we prepare them for that. We also know that it impacts their immediate life, like in the moment. Anytime we meet with a student, they must walk away with something new under all circumstances. We're adults. They have families, they're taking care of parents, um, they're struggling, sometimes they're not struggling. So we wanna make sure that we value every second that they um, share, with, share their time with us and move forward generations. Passing the GED, high set, getting a job, keeping a job. So we're just like all in. Like we really have that strong belief of our impact. So how do we define technology so we can have common language? Laptop. Google Meets, Zoom, et cetera. If they have a tablet, we have the affordable connectivity program here in San Diego. So when our students um, were able to get those tablets, we learned a tablet. Now, fortunately, we're kind of like savvy, so we can kind of navigate through a lot of the technology with the students. So we're like, we'll sit there with them. Turn, you turn on Google Meet, I turn on Google Meet right here in a moment, and then we talk. So they walk away with something immediately. We also do text. Oh man, you can't believe how successful we are with texting. Text, 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 text. That's excellent. Um, in person, actually, it's a form of technology and it actually still works. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, and if we could do smoke fire or Morse code, we would do that too to reach our student. There is no barriers. Great question. You do Morse code? What, what do you use for texting? Just regular text. A regular cell phone? A regular cell phone. We all have Google Voice number. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what we do too. Okay. As well as Remind. I use Remind for the class. And then even with the um, Google, with the regular text, you, we teach them how to send pictures, um, how to get on a link. Um, we're asking them, hey, did you, once you complete ABC part of the GED accommodations, text me back so I know you completed it. Hey, once you get your GED ID, text me back the ID so you complete it. So, and students actually do respond quickly from ages 18 to 80. So what's the myth? Adults with disabilities are afraid of technology and refuse to engage. Well, let's try out that myth. 
One of the ways we're going to dispel the myth is we're going to go to our Google, Google Forms. So if you can either take a picture of the QR code or type in this tiny URL. This is how we begin with all of our students. If they're meeting with us in a class or one-on-one, -on -one, these are one of the means that we share with the student, either a tiny URL, a Google form, or a text, <laughs> how to locate that. And so once you get to this Google form, we're gonna ask for you to complete the Google form. It's important for the engagement. So you would, we have the students, they, if they come in the first day, they put their name, phone number, email, that's not there for you. Then of course, we have a simple checklist. Are they here for employment, um, employ, employment literacy? Is it academic skills, reading, writing, math, testing accommodations? Um, is it either just to learn more about our programs, enrollment? Mm -hmm and what we offer with dark services. Mm -hmm. And then if we could just do this for fun since we're waiting oh, we on this form. If you were to sing karaoke, what song would it be? Okay, let's yeah. try it again. Karaoke now is not just for people who can sing. It's really those okay. of us who can't sing, but we get a pass. Because we actually get upset for those who can sing. They're showing off. So we just updated the access on it. <laughs> Go ahead and try it again. <laughs> Hopefully it works. Fingers. Yes, please. Is it still? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So, um, <laughs> but you get the gist, right? So the myth we're dispelling is that even if a student comes in and has never done any of these forms before, it's very, when your technology's behaving that day, mm -hmm. you can walk them <laughs> through it. QR code or tiny URL. So we were meeting with a student in that situation, the QR code did not work. We would do the tiny URL. If that did not work, we would go to a video conference with the student. We would type it in for them on their behalf because we want to make sure that we don't lose that student. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you want to go to the next one? Yes. Okay. All righty. So myth number two. Okay. So myth number two we have here is the, that adults with disabilities don't know how to navigate through digital learning. And in my class, the academic development course, um, the students can navigate through it with extra prep and planning. And this is something that many teachers are probably doing already. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about how I've used it in the classroom and how it supports our adult learners with disabilities. So first thing is I make sure to have the materials prepared. Some students are having trouble, they have trouble with keeping up with the live lesson or the video lesson. So it helps to have anything that's in procedures, like steps, written out for them so they can follow along. Um, we also have our laptops. You guys see this little tower that's hanging out there, that box? Those are the laptops that the schools provide for our students. So they won't have that as a barrier. Every student, when they come in, they grab the laptop if they don't already have one, and then follow the routine or structure that we have in place of logging into Google Classroom. Um, having this one Google Classroom set up for the students allows them to know where to find the materials, the PowerPoints, and any of the recordings that we have for class as well. Um, you might be able to see, on if you're looking on with your mobile device, that there's a little pattern that I have to how the assignments and the lessons are sent out to them. I time the lessons to go out 30 minutes ahead of time so that students can preview it before the class starts. Um, check out any links, practice any of that before they, the actual lecture happens. And then midway through the class, the homework assignment tab um, appears for them so that they know exactly where to turn in the assignment. And this happens every class meeting. Um, so now they're definitely pros with downloading the materials, watching the lessons, and then uploading their assignments onto Google Classroom. And then we just rinse and repeat every time. Okay. Um, we do model relevant skills. We have a student demo account that was created by our uh, division's resource teacher. She's back there actually, Ms. Audrey Deardor. Mm -hmm. She's created a student account for us through Google Classroom, and that way I can actually model to the students what it looks like for them. Um, I know sometimes if we use our teacher account, it looks very different, and so the students don't know where to navigate it on their screen, but with the student ac account that Audrey created for us, I can share out on my screen what where to find exactly what I'm talking about, and the students can follow along with us. So that student account is really crucial to us teaching um, just how to navigate through Google Classroom or any websites. Do the students get their own Google account, or do they get their own Google account, or do the Google account get them 
the, oh no, we use the one, for at least the class that I have, we um, use the one in the district. Okay. Because we also use, um, use it for Google Meetings um, whenever I share documents with them. And as you saw right now, right, when they're in the network, it's a lot easier for them to access those documents and files. But mm -hmm. every student that enrolls in Sweetwater has a Google account. Um, and I think that's optional. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, we have restrictions in place for ours as well. It takes time, for sure. It takes time, and there are times too that students will actually not, and outside of the class, will set up an appointment with myself. That's where the one on one that I mentioned earlier, and they'll they'll come in during office hours and say, "Hey, Miss Mac, I'm having a lot of trouble with just knowing how to share my screen." which that's another thing I didn't mention on here, but our students who join uh, remotely, that's a big skill they need to know is how to share their screen so I can see where they're having issues and help them troubleshoot. So we work on that one-on-one. -on -one. It's definitely not something that we have a magic wand and it just happens, right? But, but it does with that repetition, the structures. But I, I do want to clarify that. though, because we're not, we're, our workshop is not for students with high level cognitive technology skills. These are students who come in, may not even have, they have not, they have a phone, they have a smartphone and still won't take pictures with it. Because they're like, oh, I don't know where the picture's gonna go. They haven't even set up their email account even on their smartphone. So, or it might be a student, we have a, a well I have many examples, but this mm -hmm. one young lady, everything freaks out. Oh, oh you want me to set up my phone because you wanna put a bug in, in my computer. No, but even if you think we're going to be bugging you, we could find another way that we could support you. So we have people who won't even touch, they think they won't touch the technology till we say, well, what would you use it for? Then we make that link. So it's not really necessarily, we're high level, but we meet them where they're at and they do access yes. this. And it's not like hundreds of meetings all the mm -mm. time. Literally, sometimes it's, I'm sending them a text. Hey, open this link. Would you open that link? Tell me what you see take a screenshot, send it back. So I just kind of want to clarify, we have students who are coming in with no experience or knowledge at all because we're dispelling the myth. We're dispelling the, the myth, yeah. <laughs> we definitely dispel the myth. Um, and then the last part on here is that it also helps to have instruction recorded. And you'll see in one of the next slides that I've recorded some instructions for you guys to follow. We do that using Screencastify, which also Ms. Deardorff sets up with an account for us. So we have unlimited access to download, uh, to creating our own videos. Um, we're able to edit them for the students. And so for a student that maybe is joining asynchronously, for example, they can watch the instruction video of what steps they need to follow. A student that was in class who um, thought, ah, I, I missed steps four to eight because I was still working on a one to three, they can actually review the recording after class as well and follow up with that. And let me know if they have any additional questions or need some support. Okay, so on to the next one. That does take us to myth number three, is that adults with disabilities have poor executive functioning and can't manage technology. So to dispel, to dispel that, I'm gonna flip it and say that adults with disabilities can use technology to develop executive function skills. And this is something that, that's done through Google's Applied Digital Skills. Has anyone heard of that before? Yes, I see some, some head nods. Okay. Apsky. Apsky. Yes. So I'm gonna call it Apsky moving forward. That's just, it's like fun name for it. Uh, the short version of how do you say, how you say Google Applied Digital Skills. It is a video-based curriculum that I use for creating projects using different Google apps. So Google Docs, Google Sheets, um, Google Slides, and through it, students can learn how to create projects that allow them to practice organization, time management, planning, goal setting. And the big one is sending emails so that they can be their own self-advocates in their classes. Um, many students also disclose that they have difficulty with remembering information and note-taking. So if that's one of the concerns, there's an app ski for that. Right, right here is actually an example of one um, one of our students who has a brain injury and he is taking a medical terminology class at one of our schools. So he was able to use the note-taking lesson on Apsky to create a Cornell note template and then fill it in with the terminology he's learning. He also used his um, learning preference for visual aids 
to change the color coding and highlighting on the text so that he can interact with it more and practice um, making those connections and making sure that he retains the information by coming back and adding more info to the notes. So the next time that he pulled the notes again, he added a summary at the bottom. Uh, you don't see it on this page, but there's another one where the next time he looked at the notes again, he included an image that he pulled from uh, Google Images, also something he learned from Apsky. And the idea was that um, he would avoid the curve of forgetting by continuously interacting with the notes that he had created. Questions about that lesson? Oh, Apsky, Google Applied Digital Skills. And you guys are actually going to create your own account and try out a lesson today. Okay? So, there are two ways I'm going to give you the instruction for how to log in. If you would prefer the written steps and you have the slides on your computer, you can go ahead and click on the link that's on this slide. If, um, uh, once you log in, it's going to prompt you, it might prompt you to select your role. And so when you get there, you go ahead and select student, enter your Gmail credentials. You do not have to be on the network for this one. And then this is the class code. Now, if a student has trouble with following the instructions written out, or they prefer to have um, a visual prompt, then that Screencastify uh, program I was telling you all about allowed me to create a video. I hate listening to the sound of my voice. I'm doing this for you guys. <laughs> It's nice. Oh, thank you. So, <laughs> having that Screencastify account, the unlimited one that Audrey got us, is just amazing because then I can pre-record these videos for the student. If you have a student that maybe comes in late, because we know in adult ed sometimes a student might come in the week before the end of the semester, right, and they want to try a lesson out, and they go, ah, I can't watch that, or I know I can't give that whole lesson to them again, they can watch a recording of the class that day or watch a recording of maybe some instructions I need them to follow as a new student. And so you saw it's just going on there and hitting play, right? So just to double check, does anyone need the code or does anyone need any assistance with joining the, the class that I've created on AppSki? Correct, yes. Oh, you don't have to have it. So. You don't have to have Google Classroom on there. I do it because that's just part of the structure and routine. But they can log in with their own accounts just like you were able to do that today. And then however you, yes. <laughs> yeah. Log in as a student through the AppSki site. Um, I don't think you should have any issues with that one because I was trying using it with my personal account and I got in. No, it's no. A, we have a different one, Infinite Campus. I just use this as a way to help students learn executive function skills. Yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to think of, you know, if you fall under the header of it's easier to ask just for business things. Yes. That's right. <laughs> totally and, is. And a lot of us use it just for our dark team. Let me specifically speak to our team. Um, some, sometimes if we're going in as a student to see what they're observing, we put in our personal account so they can see both. But we use it more than just the Google Docs. We use it for even our employment specialists, how to write a resume, cover letter, um, how to calendar, how to, how to create um, uh, organized calendaring system. Task how to management. Create, get, yeah. <laughs> so we use it for a lot. I don't know if you ever explored it, but there's over, over you know, like 300 different types of um, lessons. And each lesson ranges between... Uh, about 45 to 90 minutes. It also has a lesson created for you to follow and then a quiz, but the mm -hmm. quiz doesn't really grade. They could complete the quiz, but you don't really get a grade. They yeah. could actually click anything they wanted on the quiz, get it all wrong, and they'll say congratulations, but don't tell the student that. <laughs> <laughs> so I have them log in, and as you can see, that you were sent to this one once you entered the code to join my class. I'm logged in with my student account again because I'm modeling to you what it looks like for the student view. So what I would do, and this is the shorter version, it's a modified version for our lecture today or for our conference today. But what I tell the students to do typically is they would go in. We have a presentation that I give about why I chose that specific lesson for them that day. And that's because many students have shared the barriers of having trouble remembering information, retaining it, um, and then using it, especially on tests, right? 
So then after I give my, my spiel, I, they know to log in, they know the link to click on. We go over here and just like Ms. Bratton mentioned, on this first page, it gives you all the info about the lesson, gives you a little uh, outline of all the videos that will be on there. The first video is typically, typically the login and open up this tab based on whatever app you're using. You all are actually gonna open up a tab, and I'll walk you through it, um, of a Google Doc. Okay, and that's gonna be that first video just so we can skip it. So this is another way to modify it for the students if maybe you won't be able to go over that full video with them. I'll just say, all right, everyone, before you watch the videos, Let's all open up a new tab by clicking on the plus sign up here. And if they're already logged into their Google platform, we also like to give um, some of these icons fun names. This is a waffle because it looks like the outline of a waffle. <laughs> so the students know, hey, click on the waffle, you know, to go there and then open a Google Doc. Okay, so let's have everybody in here do that as well. And then open a blank document. And so these are also part of some of the beginner lessons. If you choose um, one of the lessons on apps, you says something like creating a Google Doc or Google Docs for beginners. It takes them through how to create a new document. The idea is they go over this before we do the note taking activity, just so they have those, um, those foundational lessons down first, okay? And then under entitled document or for entitled document, you're gonna name it notes template. And so I get the students started by having them have this ready. Um, something else that I go over with the students is how to split their screen so that they can have the tab side by side and watch the video lessons on one while doing the work on the other. You'll see a picture of a student that's actually done that. Um, that makes it so the students can watch the video and then simultaneously. Yes, of course, Ms. Deardorff, I can. <laughs> So what I do with the students, and that's one of the first lessons we also go over for a digital literacy unit. I tell them, grab the tab, and we include some physical motions with it, right? <laughs> grab the tab with the left button of your mouse, and then hold it down, and with your other hand, drag that tab over until you see a ghost square. Once the ghost square appears, you release it, and then for me, because I had multiple windows up, it's telling me what do I want on the left side, so I choose the video to watch. And that's something we practice with the students. Again, it doesn't happen right away. We'll have them practice it. We'll go around just to understand like the feeling of just splitting their screen. In person or virtual or remotely? Um, it can go from five to 15, uh, and we have some students that uh, join, we have about five students that meet, or that join remotely, and so they would have to share. Yes. Well, it's not an issue for you, but it's not, it's not super great on my end. So what, what are your, your thoughts on this? What are your workarounds? Because no. visibility, you have just different abilities. Like for me, it's visual and I'm colorblind. So I'm mm -hmm. going to go with a device. I'm not going to bother with a lot of the other technology. I'm just going to have to use my device and use it. Mm -hmm. so We've had, well, with the one to one, we do provide, oh, Gonna say, oh, I don't know if I was going to say something. Um, we've had students come in and try it asking for like a tablet. We have this affordable connectivity program where the students have tried using it with a the tablet. They've practiced with that. I've had students, um, they through our district, they were able to check get a laptop. And so if there's a student that's like, I prefer the mobile device, then sometimes they'll come in in person. And when we work one-on-one -on -one together, I see where they're having challenges with transferring that knowledge from using the mobile device or the phone to the computer. So then that takes us a little step back where we have to figure out, okay, what's going on? How can I support you so you can use this 
because if you are going to move to uh, another higher education setting or the workplace, some of these skills are definitely important for you to learn. So what I'm hearing No, unfortunately, because if you saw, like you see, like you saw there, yeah, yes, <laughs> as you see there, it is really small. Yeah. Um, maybe magnification of Zoom. Yeah. It is harder for the mobile device. Yeah. So I know I use AppSki on my mobile device, but maybe because I'm used to it, maybe. But um, but I just want to get a quick, a quick, quick black backstory to the notes. So when we. So we service students, any student, learning difference, learning challenge, learning disability, think that they want to learn something new, have no idea if they have a learning um, concern. So our classes are mixed. They are not separate. We don't have separate classes for adults with disabilities. So, um, so any student that comes through our doors, unless they disclose they have a disability, we don't know if they have a disability. So this is a personal development course that's taught by four different, there's four modules in the course taught over 16 weeks. This is one of our modules, which is uh, note taking. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> strategy, uh, test taking strategy skills. So that's one of our modules. Another module is digital literacy. Then another module is reading, writing, math strategies. And then another module is executive functioning. Because that's kind of just to kind of give you a picture. So, any student that comes through the dark center doors, they take the VARC, which is a learning inventory, visual, auditory, reading, write, reading writing, kinesthetic. They take that inventory, and so we, we teach them how they can use strategies from their learning modality. And one of those things that we've learned that gives us high capacity is how do you take notes when you're in the class? Not necessarily the personal development class, but any class that they have. So that's why we're sharing with you this demonstration of the notes, because that requires executive functioning, knowing what to pull out, how they link it to their own learning modality, um, and how they can have that be a benefit for them in the class. Then they'll touch base with us in a week or two. How did that strategy work? Oh, it worked great. Or well, it didn't work great. Well, let's try something new. And we model that and walk with them through mm -hmm. that. So that's just some backstory. Yeah. They learn the skills in the class, get um, familiar with it so that when they're in their other classes or in the workplace, they can actually transfer and generalize it there as well. Uh, Audrey, and then. But if they, if they don't, because we don't know what kind of programs they have on their other computers as well. That's been like a pretty universal way to do it. Oh, yeah. We've had some students that have cool laptops that will come in and just <laughs> click twice and already it splits it for them. Mm -hmm. But just in case they don't have that feature, we go over that, that universal steps for it. Mm -hmm. And then, yes. We want every student to, because we don't even have enough students. Um, just our, the South Bay Consortium report shows that there's about maybe like 25,000 adults with disabilities only in the South Bay, which is this. So we want them to come through. So we present in all the classes. And then we, in, while we're presenting in the classes, we'll have students complete the dark interest form. And we'll say to them, this is not just for disability related. It's for anything. Have you been out of school for a while? Are you nervous about coming back to school? Do you feel like you need to have some tweaks in your learning? So that's how we launch it. Yes and no. There's a way that, to do it. So um, because we also want to prepare our students to become self-advocates, and then if they move on to, like, let's say, the community college, right? they have to refer themselves. So we do tell teachers about it and the teachers share the information about our classes, our services. Um, and then we have that interest form that Kenya showed you earlier. So teachers can help them fill out the form and then they just mention on there, hey, I would like some help with study strategies or learning strategies. And then our counselor will get them enrolled in my class. Or they can also reach out to their counselors and then share those same concerns. So that's the nice version. <laughs> okay, so so teachers always want to self-identify. Oh, you got a disability, you got a disability. So what it is is that because I teach in an auditory modality and you're a visual learner, you must have a disability because, you know, I'm grand. I could just do all this talking and you will receive it, right? So 
what we have really trained our staff that if they send us any email about a student, we send them the dark interest form. <laughs> and we say, you know what, you can sit with the student to help complete it. Maybe just ask the student, what are your needs? 90% um, of the time, teachers never even talk to the student. Hey, I see you're struggling in ABE. Um, how else can I support you through this experience? They don't even talk to the student at all. They just, you have a disability, right? So we refer them back, talk to the student, find out what their needs are, um, show them the dark infographic. We've done videos on this is how you could talk to a student, not even about the D word. Let's just talk about how can I support you, right? So we, so we have re circumvent that unless it's a deaf student, visually impaired, then if we get an email, we just jump on it immediately. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, we're not trying to do discrimination with disabilities. We just want our instructors to be in the habit of using the dark interest form. The main reason why is because people, they get sick, they're on leave. So now I have all these emails in my box to help a student. You have them, et cetera, et cetera. What if I won the lottery today? I'm not coming in. You're not getting nothing out of me. It ain't happening. Right, so we use Trello, which is our database centralized uniform system for all of our communication, and that dark interest form gives all of us access. So if someone had called out or was not around or et cetera, we have access to that. Yeah. So there was a really, a lot of good discussion <laughs> and questions, but I wanna make sure to show off my students before I end my part here. <laughs> So these are some samples of work that they've actually completed, the projects that they've completed, thanks to those APSCI lessons. So you can see here, one of my students, he did split his screen and he created his smart goal vision board using the drawing app. Um, and this was all him and watching those videos, I did not do any prompting at all for him there. Um, we've had students that use it to make a um, task management list with Google Sheets and it teaches them to make drop down menus, which I learned to do there through to AppSkey too. I didn't know about these whole, this whole drop down situation. Mm -hmm. um, so they can keep track of tasks that are in progress, maybe assignments that they need to complete, maybe a meeting that they need to have, right? And then it also shows them how to um, use the Google Calendar feature to make appointments. And so this student actually took the skills she learned, speaking of transferring those skills, right? she took those skills and transferred it to using her mobile device and created her own appointment on her phone. And so all these and more that you can do with AppSki. Um, Ms. Brown kind of touched on it earlier as well, that when they're done, you could print out a certificate of completion. Um, and students have used this to, to write out on their resume a skill that they have. Familiar with Google Sheets, able to create a, um, flyer for a business using Google Drawing. And so that right there could also help them with their employment goals. And then this is where I hand off to Ms. Bratton, but I saw we also had a question. Yeah, are these all pre-made like lessons from Yes. Yeah. Uh, you don't have step to. Step by step. Yeah, uh, I wanted us to do a little demo today, but I since know. you logged in, you can kind of check out. out. Yeah. I thought you had to like. No. Like, no. Mm -mm. You don't even have to think. <laughs> Nope. But we What's, want you to think. We, we want do. you to review it first. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so you would go to browse lessons, and so let's say students have shared with me, hey, Miss Mack, I'm having trouble remembering my appointments to things and my due dates. So I'll go, okay, you know what? I got an app for that. I'll look up a lesson relevant to that, and then I'll make sure it's part of the lesson plan that following week. All the videos are there. They yes. have extension activities, so if students are more advanced, mm -hmm. you can choose those extension activities that they could submit. Um, I do use Google Classroom for them to submit their, their projects, but you don't have to. You can have them email it to you or I teach the students how to share it with me mm -hmm. so that I get a copy of it. Yeah, no, oh no, that's not good. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. But <laughs> the, with the levels, yeah. yes, <laughs> but with the levels, if you want something maybe more of like more support, then I don't usually check that if that's the case too. You, you know, can go to the resources, the topic. To, oh, well, my hands are cold, <laughs> so I probably can't even touch anything right now. This is probably mm -hmm. the best feature, the better feature to get what you want. So if you went under, um, under the topic, to, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's just best that way, like college and career readiness. And so it goes over. 
you want to learn about workspace and docs, and then there are different levels too. So you as a teacher, you would choose, you know what, I'm going to start with this one today, maybe next week after a week's worth of doing this. Um, you can also modify the lessons. The template that I was going to have you all create today, you could have used that as a modification yeah. and then shared that template with them so that they can just fill it in. Yeah. Yeah, there's so much. Oh my, there's so, I love it so much. That's okay. <laughs> they have their own. They do with the school when they enroll. Yeah, well, when they enroll. But you can use a personal account too. You can use this with their personal account. Yes. They do have to have a Gmail account because Google, you know, Google wants to control everything, right? right? So they do so need a Gmail but most, account. But most students who enter any school typically have a Gmail account somewhere, typically. And if not, that could be your first day's lesson. Yeah. Let's create a Gmail account. There you go. Yeah. Yes. First week, let's create a Gmail account because that's also crucial for them with self-advocating, right? Is knowing how to communicate with teachers and they'll need one for a job. So yes. if they have like booty one, two, three as a Gmail, <laughs> maybe they maybe, should create yeah. a, a professional one on day one. Right. See? Right. Let's not have beer girly on your on your resume, correct? Right. Right. And there's an app ski for creating a Gmail for account. Me, yeah, <laughs> a professional one. Yeah. But speaking about beer girly, um, <laughs> we also use um, dispelling the myth with adults with disabilities that they're disengaged, right, in employment. It's hard for them to get a job, find a job, keep a job. So we use the ONET online. Are you all familiar with that already? Oh, this is awesome. Oh, it's so good. It's okay. another good tool. <laughs> it feels great to come to share this with you. You're saying no to some things because we were like, don't be, oh, you know, you get uncomfortable. You don't know what to say, right? So, oh, oh, okay. I got, I got back. Go you got that, you got that. <laughs> oh, well, can we, can we go back? Yeah, please. Oh, sorry. Thank you. That. So ONET Online is a federal database. Um, for some people who are a little bit more mature in age, it was a thick, thick, Blue occupational handbooks. So now it's all digital. So any job that anyone ever wants to look up is in ONET Online. This is an extra value feature. I cannot wait to go through these slides quickly because I know we're pressed for time. Yeah. So how we use ONET with adults with disabilities is that, or learning challenge, or learning difference, or think they have a disability, okay? Will come in, they say, oh, I want, a, I want a job but I, I know what I don't want to do. I don't want to work in fast food. Okay, well, what idea do you have? I don't know. Then they give you four different ideas. None of them relate. So what we do first, we go to ONET online. So that's how we keep them engaged. Sometimes students don't come for us for academics, but they come for the work. But they want something more than just writing a resume and cover letter. So ONET online, oh, okay, okay. how do I go next? The first thing we do is we create, create, they take the inventory for a profiler. It's 60 questions, right? I'm just showing you the end result. So they go in, take, they take the 60 questions, this populates. It tells them this is their work style, R-I-A-S-E-C. -S then they could click on realistic, and realistic will describe to them what type of work style that is. Then let's say the student says, you know what? I want to look up some jobs with realistic. Can we go to the next slide? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, well, look up jobs with realistic. But what is your goal? Do you want to get a diploma? This right here tells you you look up jobs that require no diploma. Or do you want to have a diploma? Okay, this one tells you jobs connected to that one, a diploma. This one here might say you just need an associate's degree. So you could actually decide how much work you want to put in your own life. Yeah. And we don't judge. No. So <laughs> we're like, okay, hey, I'm not going back to school. Cool. Let's just look at little mm -hmm. job, no preparation. So then when that happens, it tells you some of the work experience. These careers usually require a high school diploma. It'll give you a few examples. Then you take these examples and populate it into the ONET database and look at the job description. That's what's pretty awesome. I think that's why we keep students because 
we're not saying you have to go to college, um, you know, because for some people, college is a farce, right? We all don't get the best results. For some people, they just want to be an entrepreneur. So there's no judgment. Then when we move forward, um, if we could. So then it populates up to about 100 jobs, right? These jobs, once you click it, then it has a percentage on it. It might say 80%. 72%, the jobs are aligned to the way that they completed the work profile based on how they answered. So that's another benefit. So it even populates jobs you may not have ever thought about doing before. This star means a bright outlook. So I had a young lady, if we go to the next one. So we were gonna walk you through one, but I'll walk you through one real quickly. So we had a young lady who came to us, anxiety, um, she's diagnosed anxiety PTSD. And when she took the work profile, Mortician was the first one that came up for her. And she's like, oh, no, <laughs> absolutely not, right? So, of course, I had the yellow, yellow sun, thank you, which we know it's a bright outlook if you're a mortician because you will unlikely never be unemployed, right? So we went to mortician. Gotcha. And I'm talking to her. Uh, actually, we're do, we do virtual meetings. And she's like, oh, Ms. Brad, I'm never going to do that. But because her affect and personality is so warm, well, maybe you could be the person they call on the phone because usually if someone's in grief or mourning and they want to talk to someone, they're going to share their story. So if nothing else, you could be a voice to say, I'm sorry, let me hear more about that. You know, so long story short, the Cliff Notes version, she's mm -hmm. actually working right now as a funeral, assi a funeral mm -hmm. assistant or Yeah, she's, well, I just know she helps with um, communicating with the family and yeah. getting those Fairs in order. Right? Yes. She loves it. And her daughter now works there. And her daughter's now training to be a. Em Thank you. I was, I was going to say embryologist. But <laughs> yes. But uh, so what happens is when we completed the resume for her, um, because ONET is so detailed, what if you don't know this, every employment database is AI, but it talks to ONET. So if a student is saying, okay, this says obtain information needed to complete legal documents. So what is, let's say if the student wrote, oh, the kind of job I used to have is I gathered, I gathered papers. Okay, and then they get, they get frustrated. I never get any callbacks because you're not using what AI is using. Mm -hmm. So we just have them cut and paste, tweak it to their own personal experience. So when they upload it on any database for work, it comes back to them and say, oh, this, you might be interested in this. You might be interested in that. Here's a job. And then they get callbacks. So that's another, when we say that students are not engaged with um, adults with disabilities, not engaged with employability, they are. Because now they're creating their own resumes. We teach them how to cut and paste. They know all the exact skills here. Like this one says you need nine technology skills. OK. We do so that. <laughs> instead of us too, huh? Instead of just copying and pasting everything, one of my fun let me just skip here, because one of my funniest ones is this. Um, well, it's not here. One of them said, Oh yeah, organize and planning. Are you organized? No, I'm late to everything. Well, we might not want to put that on the resume. But let's what here are 35 different skills mm -hmm. that you may have that could connect. Let's highlight that. So when they're talking in the interview, they already know themselves. So they don't have to pretend like they're doing this whole job description. AI already talked to the resume. So that's how we take that skill and we make that their, res their interview question. So it's all about linking. We don't want to cause any extra stress on ourselves, but not yeah. students. And that's how we link the ONET to their learning. Yeah. And if they want to work on that, then they can enroll my class. Right? Yes. And work on APSCI. Yes. <laughs> Full circle. So I think that's our time. Yes. Sorry about that. Okay. We're, they've we're they've come to like sweep us out. <laughs> Where's the hook? <laughs> Sorry, but thank you all for <laughs> yeah. thank you all for coming. Um, our email is on the slide. Yeah. You can call, text, smoke, fire, most core, most core, however you want to reach us. And thank you for coming today.